Note that we are using Python 3.4.1 and Django 1.7 in this particular screencast. Let's go and see, uh, let's go and create a new project called kubelog and let's see what the contents are. As you can see, manage.py is already executable. And we're going to run the new migrate command and the new create super user command to create the super user. Both of these were usually done using the sync db command. Now when we run the server, you can see that on the browser, if you go to the local host, the admin is already generated. Compared to the previous versions, this is much faster due to the same defaults that are part of Django 1.7. Now if you just start a new application called blog and look at the structure of that, you'll see the new migrations folder. Inside the migrations folder, you have the migration scripts, which are new part of the Django 1.7 release. Now we are going to create a new blog entry model. In the blog entry model, we are going to have some few fields like the title, which will be a character field, and uh, the body, which would be a text field, and something called the slug, which is a user-friendly or a URL-friendly reference. Also, we would have uh, some kind of a Boolean variable, which would be used to indicate whether the article can be published or not. And uh, this we are going to set with a default value so that we don't have to fill it every time to true. We're also going to keep track of the created date and the modified date. Now, if you use a date time field with an optional uh, or a keyword argument of auto now add, Django automatically keeps track of when the entry was created. And if you do the same thing for modified and instead use auto uh, now, you can actually keep track of when it was modified every time it gets saved. We need a friendly way of referring to the string, uh, a string representation, so it will use the title. We'll also use some of the more aesthetic things like uh, a verbose name and a plural name so that it appears in a better manner on the admin interface. We'll also make sure that the blog entries appear in the reverse chronological order by sorting on the negative of created. Next we're going to create a query set called entry query set. We're going to make use of a new Django 1.7 feature called custom models or custom managers using query set. We're going to use this for creating, uh, for finding out, uh, for filtering everything that has been published. So all we have to do is set objects to uh, the as manager command and uh, the query set gets automatically converted into its manager form. Now, since we made a change to the model, we had to run the migrations. Of course, we had to first make sure that the installed applications inside settings has a mention of our new application called blog or app called blog. Now we run the migrations and we run first mic migrations and then migrate. And then when we go back to the admin interface, of course, it's not present because we have not added the admin.py registration. Uh, this is quite simple. In fact, it's just a one-liner. We just run, uh, we just write uh, register models.entry and we get a rudimentary uh, form for filling the uh, blog entries. As you can see, this is very, very plain uh, and it's very easy to get started with. Uh, and it also has the default set to publish but let's make it a bit more interesting. So to do that, all you have to do is derive from the model admin class. Uh, we create our own class called entry admin, which is derived from model admin. And once we do that, we set the uh, list of blogs to be displayed uh, with two columns, title and created. We also make sure that the pre-populated field uh, of slug is based on title. You can see this in action uh, to better understand how it works. So once we uh, make the new entry, new model admin as the entry, uh, as you can see, uh, the slug gets automatically populated using JavaScript. Now you can see also see that the created column is also present. To demonstrate uh, what query sets uh, do for the custom manager, uh, let me show you uh, entry.objects.all, which shows you both the entries. Now if you show the custom manager of publish, you can see that none of the entries are there because none of them have published set to true. But if you go to uh, the admin interface and set the second entry, uh, the first entry to true, it gets published. 
So this is exactly what we want. Let's make the admin format even more interesting with Markdown. So Django Markdown is a new application that I have just installed and I'm adding to settings. Now with this application, you can write your post in Markdown, in Markdown syntax that is. So for that to work, you have to add it in your project's urls.py, uh, the urls of Django Markdown app. Once you do that, you have to change your default uh, model admin uh, parent to the one parent, uh, model admin provided by Django Markdown called Markdown Model Admin. Once you do that, you'll notice that all your blog entries now have a snazzy new toolbar which has all the Markdown syntax. Okay, I took a quick break here and uh, I've added some dummy posts uh, which have this cool preview. So you can enter stuff in Markdown now. Once you do that, uh, we can start creating the public view. That is our home page which will actually show you the list of blog posts. Now we are going to use the list view which comes bundled with uh, Django itself and uh, it's a generic view. We call it a generic class view which needs a couple of uh, uh, parameters like the query set which will use the published uh, 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 custom manager. We'll also use a template called uh, home.html and we'll show, we'll tell the number of uh, entries to show per page in the paginate by. Uh, next, we actually add the URLs to be delegated to the blog applications URLs. This makes it cleaner and this makes it more reusable. So I just save the projects urls.py into a copy inside the URL uh, into the copy of the blog app. I remove everything except one line which says to use the view which we just created and that view is the list view. Uh, once we add that view, uh, we have to make sure that it's as view function is called and it's given a proper name say index and uh, we just remove the unnecessary include here and once we do that uh, we just copy uh, some of the template stuff that's already designed for us so this includes the static folder and the templates folder or uh, the directories uh, and these directories must be uh, you know uh, created and mentioned in settings which you'll see right now right now we are just writing the home.html which extends from the base template that we just copied make sure that you import or load Django Markdown because we're going to use one of the filters for uh, rendering in Markdown we're going to override a block called blog entries we're going to go through each blog entry in a for loop and objects.list uh, is the default context variable used by the list view uh, we are going to create a headline uh, which will be objects.title uh, and objects in this case is the entry uh, entry class and uh, we're going to have a dimmed line which says uh, this is the date of creation of this ob blog post which will be object.created and finally we'll have the body which will be object.body and rendered in a markdown filter and we'll close the for loop and the block uh, which should Make sure that uh, we have this template completed and looks pretty decent when you see it on the browser right now. So let's go back to settings and make sure that Django knows where the template folder is, where just created, which just copied. So as you notice, we are going to use ospart.join and base dir, uh, which is already defined up here as a part of the default configuration. So all we had to do is we had just mention uh, the base dir plus uh, templates and base dir plus static which contains all the necessary, uh, you know, uh, appearance related stuff. Oops, looks like we have a typo here. Uh, instead of having a space for the syntax of block, we missed that. Uh, still, we don't see any blog entries. I think it's context variable name should have been object underscore list. Wow. So now we have a full blog with all the pagination, and everything taken care of. As on my first tutorial, we are next going to create tagging for our posts. This time we are not going to use uh, Tagit or any other application. Instead, we are going to use models and create our own simple tag class. The only field we need is a slug to keep it simple. And uh, we are going to use a slug field with a max length of about 200 as before. And we are going to define the string uh, representation as well, which will be just simply returning self.slug. Next, we are going to define a many-to-many -many relationship between our entry and our tag models so that any number of entries can be tagged to any number of models or any number of tags. 
Uh, since we changed the model, we need to run migrate now. So make migrations first and then migrate blog. After we do that, we need to make sure that our tags show up in the admin interface as well. So we go to our admin.py. Uh, just add a single line which registers our new tag class. Uh, next, we have to ensure that the tags appear in our blog so that we go to our templates and uh, we are just going to use our home.html uh, just add a meta uh, in our meta part of the post we are just going to combine uh, using the join filter uh, all the tags under objects which will be called objects.tags.all uh, we separate them by commas so uh, let's refresh our page uh, it looks like it doesn't appear uh, maybe we have to add the tags first yep let's add some few tags called general or technical and uh, let's save and uh, see if they are reflected in our uh, website looks like it doesn't uh, maybe there's a problem with our uh, admin no it looks like it's checked maybe it's a problem with the template itself uh, okay let's check the template Oh, the typo was object instead of objects. Sorry, object should be the correct one. Now let's look at uh, RSS feeds. So uh, let's open a new file called feed.py and quickly create RSS feeds based on the syndication app which comes with uh, Django. Uh, we had to s import our model called entry. Let's subclass the feed class. Uh, it requires some simple uh, class methods like title, blog feed will be hard coded as feed uh, because that's where I expect the feed to be add a simple description uh, we need to define items method and this just returns the latest five entries in reverse chronological order which are published of course we don't want to show unpublished stuff let's go to URLs and add a pattern for uh, the feed uh, this will be just the same uh, location slash feed slash and uh, we'll use our uh, feed uh, dot pi import the feed class from feed dot pi and uh, we'll make sure that uh, it appears uh, with the name of feed uh, once we do that uh, we have to make sure that each individual blog entry appears so we're going to use a gen again we are going to use a generic view for each blog entry individual page our model will be models dot entry and uh, we're going to use the template new template called post which we have to create and uh, we'll just add a URL pattern for that which will be nothing but our slug and uh, the slug of the entry would be uh, captured in this regular expression uh, which will uh, simply be named uh, which will simply use that uh, generic view which we defined and which will be named as entry underscore detail now we go to our uh, entry model and we'll have to end, uh, override the get absolute method or get absolute URL method. Uh, this actually uh, shows up in the admin interface. It's nothing but a reverse mapping uh, from what URL pattern we just created. It returns the full URL to that uh, entry. Uh, we'll uh, import this uh, reverse function as well. Django.co.url servers import reverse. Once we do that, we have to ensure that. Uh, uh, it appears correctly okay I think we'll do a last check and then generic detail view was missed out uh, okay our feed appears here and the last few entries are shown uh, it, my chrome extension shows it properly uh, let's go to admin and uh, see if uh, the view on site button works no because we haven't created post.html first uh, we just use our home.html and use it as a base for our post.html just remove the for loop and we are done pretty much uh, all we have to do is ensure that the permalink the heading appears as a permalink uh, to that entry uh, okay looks like we made a typo here uh, the a anchor is just a mapping uh, we'll copy the same line to home dot back to home.html to ensure that uh, the home page entries also show us links okay the headings are all links now great now I'm going to show you how testing is done in Django uh, it's quite uh, automated there are two test cases that I've created here for the blog the first one checks if the published entries are appearing correctly uh, we are not going to use the setup method 
uh, we're just going to create an entry we're going to see if publish count is one and we're having to run the test by using manage test log let's see what happens if uh, there is a mistake or if there is an exception I'm going to add an exception in our uh, returning the feed uh, as you can see the error appears as not implemented error so thanks a lot for watching the screencast i hope you enjoyed it on youtube don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel thank you Thank you.